So today we're going to be modeling dynamic equilibrium. I'm going to show you one model that we can use. But what we know so far about dynamic equilibrium is it occurs when a reversible reaction occurs within, within a closed system. So this is whereby the system appears to have stopped changing. Okay, sometimes we refer to that as it appears to be static. But what in actual fact is happening is that we've got reactants forming products and products forming reactants at the same reaction rate. Okay, and so the way that we're going to model that today is using two measuring cylinders, and I'll just hold those up. So one I've got 100 mils of water in, and the other one's empty. Okay, this is measuring, sorry, this is modeling a closed system. So, I mean, imagine it's closed. So if I put that measuring cylinder on top of the other one, that's the best we're going to get. This is a model, so it's going to have some limitations. Now, the full measuring cylinder is representing the reactants. We're going to start with reactants in a system before it begins to form products. So we've got no products at present, okay? And the way that we're going to create products in this particular model is using these pipettes, glass pipettes. I've got a 10 mil pipette for the forward reaction from reactants to products, and I've got a two mil pipette for products to reactants for the reverse reaction. And so to begin, I'm just going to pop them upside down whoops, into the measuring cylinders and I'm going to pop my finger over the top. And you're going to notice that there is water in the pipette that is going from reactants to products, but obviously no water going from products to reactants. Um, so we're going to just transfer across, okay, and until that is empty. And then we're going to do the same thing again. But before we do this, we want to actually record how much water we've just transferred. So if I started, the initial was 100 in uh, the reactants, measuring cylinder, zero in the product. Now if I have a look, and I've got to take the pipette out to get an accurate reading here. Now if I have a look, I've actually got, bottom of the meniscus to read our measuring cylinder, I've actually got 91 mils in the first measuring cylinder and the reactants. And now I've got, it's a bit hard to see because there's no markings underneath the tent. So I'm going to just make an assumption here, not great in chemistry, but we're going to say that that's nine, assuming 91, they should both uh, quantitatively equal to 100. So if I've got 91 in the reactants, I should have nine in the products with no spillage, which may have happened. And so we're going to keep doing this and now that I've formed, we formed products, actually there is a little bit, there is a small amount of product going to be reacting to form reactants. Obviously not going to be as much as what the reactants are forming products, but there is still some reaction happening there. It started to happen. So now I'm gonna take a second measurement and I'm gonna say that there is now 83 within the reactants measuring cylinder and now I've got a readable amount so bottom of the meniscus let's say I've got 17 in the uh, products measuring cylinder and so essentially you're going to keep on transferring and keeping keep on recording your measurements for each measuring cylinder until a point at which you see the concentration of reactants remain constant and the concentration of products remain constant. And this is a clear indication that the system has reached equilibrium. Now, they may not necessarily be the same. And for many reactions, they will not be the same, okay? Quantity of, of reactants and products or moles. But what we will see is that the values of, or the concentration of uh, reactants and the concentration of the products remains constant and no longer changes. Okay, we'll be back to show that. Okay, so we're back and it's about 30 transfer cycles later. And I'll just hold up our measuring cylinders. Here's our reactor measuring cylinder. And we're sitting at about the 30 mil mark for our reactants. And our product measuring cylinder, we're now sitting at around the 60, 67, 68 uh, mark, mil mark for our products. 
So we can see oh, the concentration of the products in this particular reaction is higher than that of the reactants. Now, bear in mind that this is all still in one system, okay? And if I just do a couple of quick transfers, same pipette goes into the same measuring cylinders, and I'll just do this really quickly. You might have noticed that we don't actually have an amount equal to 100 anymore. So we've had some water spill out of our pipettes on the way over. And that's another limitation to the model, okay? We've had reactants and products leave the system, okay? So we're just gonna have to say that that's one of our limitations to this particular model. Um, but it's got a fair few positive points as well. So if I hold those up again, Okay, reactants still very much near the 30 mark. Okay, after how many transfers did I just do then? Two or three. And the products, uh, sorry, the products measuring cylinder still at about the 67. Now we're, you know, kind of close to 68 there. Okay, that mark. So there you go. We've reached a macroscopically unchanging system the concentration of the reactants and the products is not changing anymore okay which would lead us to infer that the rates of reaction the forward reaction and the reverse reaction are now equal and that's our model for dynamic equilibrium thanks for watching